Hello, Luke. Welcome to Lesson 53. So today we're going to be talking about power rule for exponents and conversions of volume. So this lesson shouldn't be too bad for you. There's really just uh, two concepts that we're looking at. Conversions of vo volume, you'll find, are, are very intuitive, and uh, we're not really learning anything too new in that one. So that should be an easy part of the lesson. The first part is just kind of um, an extension to what we already know in regard to exponents. So it should be pretty straightforward today. In your textbook, they kind of begin the lesson out by just uh, reminding you of all the different rules that we've learned with regard to exponents. So I think that might be a good place for us to start as well. So when we talk about exponents, if we have something that looks like this, if I have x times x times x times x times x, right? And I want to write that in a simpler manner, we would use an exponent. So this would be the same thing as x to the fifth, right? It's the basic definition for exponents. x to the fifth just means that x is being multiplied by itself five times, right? So that's very basic, very simple. Um, that's probably the first thing we learned in regard to exponents. Another thing that we've learned is we've learned how to multiply exponents or I should say multiply terms that uh, are, are like terms in the sense that they have the same variable, variable, but they have different exponents. So if I have x to the third times x to the fourth, let's say, and we've learned how to multiply these. x to the third times x to the, x to the fourth is just x to the seventh, right? Uh, we add the exponents when we're multiplying terms that have the same base the same variable, okay? Um, we've also learned how to um, recognize invisible exponents. So we've talked about that. We've talked about if we have something like this, we can envision this as being an x to a one, x to the first power, even though we don't always write that one. Uh, we've also learned about the zero. x to the zero power is always going to be equal to one provided that the x is not a zero. And I should probably say that, um, that these rules that we're looking at here, I guess everything except for the first one, all of these, I should probably write, maybe I'll write it in red over here. There is an assumption that we're making. We're making the assumption that x is not equal to zero. We don't often think about this, and we don't usually talk about it. It's just something that we just understand uh, that we are assuming. It's, it's an assumption, but maybe we should just point it out to be clear that in all three of these, <clears throat> we are assuming that x is not zero. If x is zero, it, it, it can mess th some things up. So zero to the third, we could probably make some sense out of this first one, actually. Uh, but, uh, you know, what's zero to the one? Is zero to the one a zero? Uh, maybe a little bit of a question. Zero to the zero, that's probably the biggest question out of all three of these. Um, zero to the zero power is not actually a one, or at least not always. We don't always consider that to be a one. So, but that's stuff that we'll learn later. For right now, we'll just remind you anyway that when we do these rules, we're assuming that the x is not equal to zero. The variable is not equal to zero. Uh, so now that I've said that, you can kind of ignore it and just remember the rules. But in the back of your mind anyway, you should remember that x does not equal zero. All right. Uh, so moving on. Other things that we've learned in regard to exponents. So we've learned about negative exponents. We've learned uh, well, we'll go back to our other color here. We've learned that uh, x to the negative 3, for example, could be written as 1 over x to the third. That's another rule that we've learned. And again, x cannot equal 0. Put that here. If x were equal to 0, in this case, we'd have 0 in the denominator, which is always a no-no. Um, so x cannot be equal to 0. Um, another thing that maybe we could think about is, uh, you know, when we have multiple um, variables in the numerator and the denominator, if I have x to the second over x cubed, I could write this as x to the second minus 3, which would be equal to x to the negative 1, all right? 
which in turn, we could actually even write that as 1 over x. Essentially, we're just remembering that we can move things from the numerator uh, from the numerator into the denominator or from the denominator into the numerator by simply changing the sign of the exponent. All right, so we've learned all of these things already. This should all be review. It's just kind of reminding you about all of the different rules that we've learned with regard to exponents. Uh, so now let's, let's get to something new. So I guess what I want you to think about is what, what do you think would happen if I had something like this? Maybe if I had x to the third in parentheses. Let's say I raised those parentheses to the second power. All right. We have not seen anything that looks quite like this before. We have an, a variable that's being raised to an exponent, and then that whole uh, term is being placed in parentheses, and then that is being raised to an exponent. So what would happen here, do you think? I'm going to give you a second here to just kind of think about it, kind of hypothesize on your own. What do you think we would do here? There is a way to simplify this, and there's a way to kind of show how and why it works, but I want you to maybe just think about it first on your own. What would you do if you were forced or told to do something with this, if you were told to simplify it? Any ideas? Well, after you've thought about it here a little bit, let's let's go over it. Well, let's think about what this means. And really, it, it all goes back to this very first definition of exponents. Kind of goes right back to this. So x to the third is being raised to the second power. And again, we, we have to think of these parentheses as kind of being a bucket. Okay, so they're containing this x to the third, and it's the bucket that's being raised to the second power, which means everything inside that bucket is being raised to the second power. So what does it mean to have something raised to the second power? Well, it means that that something is being multiplied by itself th this many times, whatever the power is. So this would indicate that we're taking x to the third, and we're multiplying it by an x to the third. We're taking everything in these parentheses and multiplying it by itself twice. All right? And if we do that, we know how to do this. This is just goes right back to this rule. If we're multiplying two variables that are like variables in the sense that they have the same base, and we can simply add the exponents. So x to the third times x to the third is simply going to be x to the sixth. Now remember, we're not multiplying the exponents, we're adding the exponents here. 3 plus 3 is 6. So we end up with x to the 6. Um, and that is actually what this should simplify to. This should simplify to x to the 6th. All right? Let's try another one. What if I have x to the 4th, and I'm raising it to the 5th power? All right, what do you think that would be? Well, the same rules apply. We're simply going to take that x to the fourth and multiply it by itself five times this time. So x to the fourth times itself five times. And if we do that, we can simplify this by simply adding the exponents. So we have 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Another way to add that is to multiply 4 times 5, right? We have 5 4s, so what are they going to add up to? They're going to add up to 5 times 4, which is going to be 20. So we end up with x to the 20. <clears throat> now the thing I want you to notice here is that to multiply these, we added the exponents but we recognize that we're repeating the same exponent over and over and over again five times. And so to quickly add that, we can take the 4 and multiply it by a 5 to get us to the 20. It's just a quick way of adding up all of these exponents. But if we recognize that from the get-go, we could say that, oh, all I need to do here is take this 4 and multiply it by this 5 and that'll give me this 20. Do you see that? And if we go back to the other problem, 
I could have just taken this 3 and multiplied it by this 2 to get me to this 6. All right. So we are in the background, behind the scenes, we're writing them out like this and then adding these exponents. But to do this quickly, we can recognize that we're just taking the 4 times the 5. We're going to have 5 terms, each being raised to the 4th power. So we simply add the 4 5 times, which is the same thing as 4 times 5, which is going to be 20. Right? So that's the fast way to do this. So that's the general rule. If we have something in parentheses, and those parentheses are being raised to a power, then we need to multiply the exponent of all the terms inside the parentheses uh, by the exponent outside the parentheses okay, to get our, our solution. So hopefully that is pretty straightforward to you and you see how that works. But let's try to complicate things just a little bit here. I know how much you like things to be complicated. Let's, let's try something out. Let's say we've got, and maybe just for further practice, let's do one more. Whoops, sorry. Let's do m to the negative 4. That's just for the fun of it. We'll throw a negative in there. Raised to, well, we'll go to the, ne the second. And then what if I've got m to the negative 3 to the negative 3? Throw a negative exponent in there. And then, let's go even more creative. Let's go 3m to the second raised to the second. And then let's go 3a, b, c, d to the second raised to the fourth. Okay. So let's try some of these. Maybe we'll do just one more. Let's do a 2a squared b to the third, c, raised to the negative second. Well, well, we'll leave that out for right now. Let's just go to the second. We'll keep it a little simpler. All right, so let's try some of these and see how we do. All right, so the first one, m to the negative 4 times 2. Well, what was the general rule? that we worked on on the last page there. It was that we can simply take this exponent and multiply it by the exponent outside the parentheses. So m to the negative fourth quantity raised to the second is going to be m to the negative four times two. A negative four times two is a negative eight. So we have m to the negative eight. Pretty straightforward. Not too complicated. If we wanted to write that without a negative exponent, we could even put that in the denominator and make it 1 over m to the 8th. All right? All right, let's keep going. What about this, this next one here? Well, here, same idea applies. I have m to the negative 3. I'm raising that to a negative 3 power. So we're going to multiply these two exponents, and we're going to get an m to a negative 3 times a negative 3, which is a positive 9. So that would be our solution. Pretty easy. How about this next one? This next one, yeah, let's see here. This next one, we've got 3m squared raised to the second power. Now this one's kind of interesting because our coefficient isn't a 1 like it was in our other ones. Here we actually have a 3 as a coefficient. And we need to be careful here. The temptation may be to say, okay, we're going to take this 2 and multiply it by this 2, and we're going to get 3m to the 4th. That, that might seem to be the right path to go down. However, there's something that we're missing here. Okay? And to show that, let's remember what this 3m squared raised to the second power means. This exponent outside the parentheses is telling us everything inside of this set of parentheses, the whole bucket, is being raised to the second power. So it's being multiplied by itself twice. So that would mean it's equivalent to 3m squared, that's what's inside the parentheses, and we're multiplying that by itself, 3m squared. And you can see how the variable m squared times m squared certainly will give us m to the fourth, which is what we kind of got over here. But 
we have to remember that we are still multiplying this 3 out as well. A 3 times a 3 is a 9. So we can see how it should equal 9m to the 4th. And if we just multiplied the variable exponent by the outside exponent, we would end up with 3m to the 4th, which is not what we should get. We should get 9m to the 4th. So the thing to remember here is that even coefficients need to be raised to the power outside the parentheses. So this 3, think of it as a 3 to the 1, an invisible 1 there. And we need to actually raise that 3 to the outside power as well. So it's going to become a 3 to the 1. We take this 1, multiply it by the 2. That's going to give us a 3 to the 2nd. And then we take this m squared and we multiply it by this 2. And we get an m to the 4th. Now this could simplify, 3 squared, we can do that, is going to be 9m to the 4th, which is the answer that we had decided over here we should get. Okay, so the moral to this one, the moral to this story, is that you need to remember that even the coefficient exponents, even if they're invisible, have to be multiplied by the exponent outside the set of parentheses. All right? So bearing that in mind, let's go to this next one. We have a big term. Now notice, though, I should say, that this term inside the parentheses is still all multiplication. We haven't stepped away from that. Uh, this last term, there was multiplication in, implied between the 3 and the m squared. There is multiplication implied between all of these variables and coefficients in this term. The thing I want you to recognize right away is that there's no addition here. There's no addition. It's still all multiplication inside the parentheses. We will not actually talk about addition inside the parentheses today. Later on, that'll be another subject. What happens if we have, you know, x plus y being raised to the second power? Here we have addition inside. Uh, that is a whole other ballgame. That's something that we will have to talk about later. But for right now, they won't give you problems like this. They'll make sure that everything inside this set of parentheses is being multiplied by each other, and there isn't any addition. But bear that in mind, because that may confuse you later if you don't kind of understand that now. Uh, we are only dealing with uh, terms that are being multiplied by each other for right now uh, in the parentheses. Okay, so seeing that it's all multiplication, we can use these rules that we've been working on right now. So if I have uh, this term being raised to the fourth power, what do I do to simplify? Well, I have to raise every single variable, every single coefficient, everything in here has to be raised to the four power, four, fourth power. This whole bucket needs to be raised to the fourth power. Okay, so it's helpful to actually write that, just kind of showing it. So we have 3, well, this is to the 1, so 1 times 4 is 4, so we're going to end up with a 3 to the 4th power. This a is a 1 too, that has an exponent of a 1. So 1 times 4 is 4, so we have a to the 4th. Same thing applies for the b and the c. We're going to have a b to the 4th and a c to the 4th. The d, we already have a 2, so we need to multiply the 2 times the 4, which is going to give us an 8. d to the 8. All right. So now we've kind of, in a sense, kind of distributed this 4 through each of these different variables and coefficients. Now we're ready to just simplify this with the same steps that we've used in the past. There aren't any like terms. Uh, so we can't multiply things out to be any nicer. But we can take this 3 to the 4th and turn that into a number that makes sense. So a 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, I would think of that as being a 9 times 9. Because if I have a 3 4 times, I could say, well, these two are 9, these two are 9. And then I can go a 9 times a 9, and that's going to give me an 81. All right, so that's kind of the direction I would go with that. Uh, you could have multiplied that out any way you wanted, but we would have ended up with 3 to the 4th is equal to 81, a to the 4th, b to the 4th, c to the 4th, d to the 8th. That would be our solution. All right. Okay, let's try one more here and see how you do. 
we have one that's kind of similar to the last one. So actually, why don't you pause the video on this one? Give this one a try first, and then we'll do it together. All right, so same things apply here. We need to, in a sense, raise everything inside this set of parentheses to the second power. We do that by multiplying this two by the exponents within the parentheses. So this two is being raised to the first power. So we need to recognize that it is now a two raised to the one times two, which is gonna give us a two. And then we have an a to the second power. Well, the second power times this second power is gonna be a to the fourth. b to the third, well, that's gonna be b to the th three times two, which is gonna give us b to the sixth. And then we have a c to the first, and the first times two is just gonna give us c squared. All right, and then lastly, we can kind of simplify this coefficient. A two raised to the second power is gonna be a four, and we end up with this as our final simplification. Okay, so it is pretty straightforward. The thing I wanna just remind you of is make sure that you have it very clear in your head. Maybe even write this in your notebook. Um, you need to make sure that you've got it clear that something like this, six, uh, well, we'll go to the variable, x to the third times x to the uh, second, let's say, this is going to be equal to x to the three plus two. We add the exponents which is going to be equal to x to the fifth, okay? This, x to the third raised to the x to the second, here this is going to be equal to x to the third times two, which is equal to x to the sixth, okay? So really make sure that you don't get these two things confused because that's generally where students make mistakes. Once they've done so many of these problems, they kind of go back to this problem and they make the mistake of going x to the third times x to the two is gonna be x to the three times two, which is gonna be x to the sixth. They multiply the exponents here and there shouldn't be any multiplication of the exponents there. That's when you add the exponents. So over here, we do multiply the exponents. So if you have the parentheses being raised to an exponent, you multiply the exponents. If you have variables of, you know, like variables, you add the exponents when you multiply them, okay? This is very important to have this distinction clear in your head so that you know what to do when you have these problems. So this is super important, super important. Write that down in your notebook. Make sure you are clear on when to add the exponents and when to multiply the exponents. Okay? All right, so just to make sure that we're clear on this, let's try a couple more and just make sure that you've got this down. We'll try to maybe make things just a shade more complicated uh, so that you can be familiar with how to do these. So let's say I have a two, a squared, b to the negative three, c to the fourth, and I'm raising this. Let's go different. Let's go to the negative two power. <clears throat> All right, so let's try this one out. So again, why don't you pause the video, try this on your own, and then we'll do it together. All right, well, let's try this one. This one's a little bit different because we have some negatives in there. Uh, but the bottom line is negatives are not hard. We just need to know how to deal with them. So if we have a two, this is being raised to the first power. We need to multiply this by the negative two. Remember, we're not adding, we're multiplying because this is outside the parentheses. So two to the one times a negative two is gonna be two to the negative two. All right, and notice I'm not really worrying about figuring this out yet. Right now I'm just multiplying exponents. So a squared to the negative two is gonna be two times a negative two, which is a negative four. So we have a to the negative four. B to the negative three times a negative two is gonna be B to the positive six. And C to the, the fourth uh, times a negative two is gonna be C to the negative eight, okay? So this is an appropriate answer. However, let's simplify it. I like to get rid of exponents. We can certainly try to figure out what this coefficient is. 
So if I'm sorry, I like to get rid of negative exponents. That's what I meant to say there. So let's let's go ahead and do that right now. How do we get rid of negative exponents? Remember, we simply moved them um, onto the other side of the fraction. Now you might say, what fraction? I don't see any fraction. Well, that's where we have to remember that this could be thought of as being over a one. All right. So if I want to make this a positive exponent, I need to take this term and move it down to the denominator. And that will change the sign of the exponent. So if I do this, this 2 to the negative 2 would move down and become 2 to the positive 2. a to the negative 4th, well, that's another negative exponent. So let's move him down. He's going to become a to the 4th. B to the 6 is already positive, so we're just going to leave him in the numerator. Don't move him. He's great right where he is. C to the negative 8th, well, he's a negative. Let's move him down. So he becomes C to the 8th. And now once we've reached this point, it's much easier to decide what this 2 is. It's not so easy when we're looking at 2 to the negative 2. What is that? Well, now it's 2 to the positive 2. We can definitely figure that out. So we end up with B to the 6th over... 2 to the 2 is going to be 4, a to the 4th, c to the 8th. And that would be our solution. All right? Okay, let's, let's try one more here. Maybe I'll just pull one straight from the book and see how you handle it. Let's try this one. Okay, go ahead and try this one on your own. And then we'll try it together. All right, so here we have a couple options available to us. Um, but I'm just going to go with the straightforward approach and do the same thing that we've been doing all along. So if I have 2 to the first, we'll multiply that one by the, the exponent out here, which is a negative 5. So we end up with 2 to the negative 5. a to the negative 2 raised to the negative 5th is going to be a to the positive 10th. b to the second raised to the negative 5th is b to the negative 10th z to the negative 10 raised to the negative 5 is going to be z to the positive 50. All right. Now we can try to get rid of negative exponents, make life a little easier for us. So we have our, our fraction line here. This 2 to the negative 5th, we're definitely going to move him down, changing him to 2 to the positive 5th. a to the 10, we'll leave him right where he is. We like him b to the negative 10, move him down, get rid of that exp negative exponent. z to the 50th, we'll leave him right where he is as well. Now we can figure out what this 2 to the 5th is, and we're going to end up with a to the 10th, z to the 50th, over 2 to the 5th, which is what? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, let's see, it would be 16 times 2 is 32. So we'd have 32 b to the tenth. All right, so that would be our solution to this problem. Not hard. Let's let's try another one here. Okay, let's try this one out. So why don't you pause the video, try this one on your own, and then we'll do it together. All right, so same approach. This one we have a, we have a fraction inside our bucket here, inside our set of parentheses. Um, so again, everything, everything needs to be raised to that third power. So we need to go through and, and do that for every single item in here. So we have a three. Well, that's to the first power. So we raise that again to the third. We have three to the one times three, which is three to the third. X to the zero. Now this is interesting because X to the zero is a one right? We know what that is. X to the zero is just going to be a one. All right. And we could think of that then as a one to the one being raised to the third, which is going to give us one times three, one to the third. Well, that's just one times one times one, which is of course just one. So it really doesn't change. Now, the way to think of that is if we leave it as X to the zero and we're raising that to the third, well then we can multiply like we've been doing all along. What's 0 times 3? Well, that's 0. So we end up with x to the 0, which is going to give us a 1. So either way, we just end up with a 1. So this x to the 0, um, we just need to consider that a 1. So maybe just to be clear, I'll throw that 1 in here. This is still being multiplied by a 1. Okay? 
this x to the 0 raised to the third is just going to be a 1. Then we have our y raised to the first times the 3 is going to be y to the third over, <clears throat> well, we need to do this guy also. He's in the denominator, but we still need to raise him to the third power. So k to the fourth to the third is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. So this is going to be k to the twelfth. And then we can kind of simplify this a little bit. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 again is 27. Of course, 27 times 1 is just 27. And then we have the y to the third all over k to the twelfth. And that would be our solution. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that's probably enough to get you going on those. Uh, that, I think that's as far as we'll take it right now. So just keep in mind what we've gone over, when to multiply, when to add exponents. And just in the back of your mind, just remember that right at, as of this point, we're only dealing with um, items inside our parentheses that are being multiplied by each other not added. It's only multiplication that we've been looking at so far. We'll have to talk about addition later. All right, let's bring it, that brings us to the next part of our, our lesson here today. And we're dealing with unit multipliers again. This should be very straightforward. You've gotten very good at doing these. We've been doing these for a long time. Now we're just starting to talk about cubic measurements instead of just measurements that are single or squared. Okay, uh, so the same rules apply. There's just one extra step now, and I think that will make sense to you. So let's just do a problem. Use three unit multipliers. Oh, that is a typo. That should be to convert, to convert 56 cubic feet to cubic inches. Okay, 56 cubic feet. So we're dealing with a 56 uh, feet cubed. And we're trying to get that to inches cubed. All right, so how would we go about doing this? They kind of give us a hint and tell us we need to use three unit mul multipliers. So what would be the unit multiplier if we're trying to go from feet to inches? Well, we, we know that we want to get rid of the feet and the feet is in the numerator. So we're going to use the unit multiplier that has the feet in the denominator. And we're trying to get to inches, so we can definitely put inches up in the numerator and now we can fill in the, the coefficients here. There are 12 inches in one foot. So that's going to be the unit multiplier that we're going to be using. So we're going to take this 56 feet cubed, and we're going to be multiplying that by this unit multiplier. But if we think about what happens here, <laughs> If we think about what happens here, the foot here will only cross out one of these feet. So if I put this over a, a fraction like so, this foot will cross cancel with this foot, one of them. There's three of them here though, so this will re be reduced to a two. But we still have a two, and we don't. We want these this feet to be totally gone because we're trying to get to inches. So just like you did when it, things were squared. You had to multiply it by a second unit multiplier that was the same unit multiplier just for the purpose of removing that second unit. We need to do the same thing here because this foot will cross this 2 out, but now it's just becoming a 1. We still have a foot here. All right, we haven't eliminated it completely. So when things are cubed, we then need to multiply it by a third unit multiplier in order to remove this, in this case, foot completely. Now the foot is gone. We've, we've cross-canceled it out, all right? And then we're ready to multiply our numerator, which is gonna be 56 times 12, and I'm just gonna say 12 raised to the three, because there's three of them, times 12 raised to the three, and I guess I won't put it over anything. It's just inches, cubed. So this would be my solution. Now you could have written that, I think the way you've been writing it, which is totally fine. We multiply this by 12, three, whoops, 12, three times inches cubed. That's acceptable as well. 
All right. So really, the only difference here is we've we've got one more unit multiplier that we need to use because the units are cubic, no longer at most squared. All right. So let's just try one more of these. Make sure that we've we've got this down pat. Use six unit multipliers to convert 100 cubic centimeters to cubic feet. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, so let's do this one. So we're trying to go from 100 cubic centimeters, so 100 centimeters cubed, and we're trying to go from there to feet cubed. So how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to take this 100 centimeters cubed, and we're going to multiply it by a unit multiplier such that the centimeters will be cross-canceled. So we know we want a centimeter down here, so that those will cross out. Uh, so what what unit you know, multiply when we're talking about feet? Well, usually the approach is to first convert things over into inches, because we know that one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters, right? So now that centimeter is going to cross out one of these centimeters, uh, but we still have two left, so we need to multiply th this again twice. So we have one inch over 2.54 centimeters. And then one more time, one inch time over 2.54 centimeters. And now we basically have three centimeters here that can all cross out these three centimeters. And we're left with just the 100. But we're not done yet because that would convert it to inches, but they don't want inches, they want feet. So we need to multiply this now to get rid of the inches. So how are we going to get rid of the inches? Well, we're going to have to use a unit multiplier with an inch in the denominator. We're trying to get to feet, so we could definitely put feet up in the numerator this time because we know there are 12 inches in one foot. So we can multiply it by this unit multiplier. This will eliminate one of these inches, but we still have two more. So we need to multiply this by itself two more times. So we have a 12 inches here, and then we have a foot over 12 inches here. Okay, and now these inches will cross out the remaining two inches here. And at this point, we've gotten to where we want to be. We're, we're now left with feet in the numerator. So in the whole numerator, don't forget about this 100. He's still sitting over here, and he's, he's in the numerator. So don't forget about him. We have 100 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So it's 100. And then we have 3 feet, so it's going to be feet squared, or cubed, excuse me. All right? All of that over, over 1 times 2.54 being raised to the three, third. So it's 2.54. I'll put it in parentheses, being raised to the third power. And then that's being multiplied by 12 raised to the third power, because again, there are three of them. So we're, we're going to write it like this. All right. And that would be not the most simplified form of the answer, but certainly a correct answer. And that's where I would leave it. All right. Very good. So hopefully this all makes sense. Like I said, this part is very straightforward. It's just one step beyond the squared uh, units, we're now into the cubic units. So we have to use three unit multipliers instead of two. Uh, very straightforward. All right. Excellent. So I think that is where we will stop today. And we will continue tomorrow. Good luck with the seat work. And I will see you tomorrow.